Well, good evening and welcome to Off Planet TV Live. I'm Randy Moggins, and uh, this is the big moment. We launch on to Conscious Consumer Network, CCN, and I want to give a shout out to Mel and Biggie for uh, making this possible. We are, um, well, it's always fun to try new things. I've done radio for a long time, and I've seen epic failures, but I think the uh, I, I think the potential for train wrecks here is exceedingly great, and I think we're going to pull it off. I think you'll be amazed at how bad we can screw this up. No, seriously, it's going to be a great show. Um, the second hour tonight will be Savon Beaumont, and he is, um, well, he's the man that unfolds the matrix using the words, the spells, the um, the language of the elites, but this hour... We're joined by somebody I can't call a guest and can only say that he is my friend. I want to welcome on board Off Planet TV, Duncan Ophinian. Good evening and welcome. Hey, brother. Good to see your face. Good to have you on. It's comforting to have you on right now because we were uh, biting our nails down trying to get microphones (laughs) to work. Video. It's us. It's It's us. us. Enough said. It's just, it's (laughs) us. But it is good to be here, and it's it's wonderful. It's really wonderful to kind of launch out into something a little bit different. And I, you know, from my standpoint, I got to learn all this technology, and then I can uh, begin to screw with it a little bit. But uh, we are uh, we are effectively trying to penetrate the matrix right now in any way possible, and the visual media is one way to do that. Um, just being able to look people in the eye, let them see us even in the darkened room that is this background here. Um, No green screens, um, very little lighting. And uh, basically the concept behind us is honest communication. And um, so we've, uh, you know, I got to tell you, last week we went through this uh, epic spin with the equinox and <clears throat> people laugh about this but the um the spiral effect of what's going on with the galactic spheres and stars out there is um well it's it's hitting us harder and harder because as we've talked about for a long time the the veil is lifted and so all this cosmic energy is rushing in and planet earth is just naked exposed to all of it and we talked over the weekend and i said you know things got really quiet it was like freaking me out and now the noise level is going back up again and uh, things are starting to get pretty wild what's your take on it well remember too i told you there would be one more snowstorm yes and it (laughs) it hit chicago um like a giant foot coming down out of nowhere and then it moved east and i know the reason why for that okay yep. uh, <laughs> we got a piece of that yeah what people need to understand is you have to look at the markets where is foreign currency exchange traded that chicago chicago <laughs> Chicago got blasted under for a reason. And I told you part of that reason yesterday when I, when I sent you that text, uh, the snowstorm, the winter storms are, are done. Uh, there may be a couple of flurries and whatnot to slow some people down, but it, for this year, they're, they're done. The major winter storms are over. Um, it's just, um, it's crazy right now. It absolutely is. The, um, the equinox, we had the, um, the uh, solar eclipse um, combined with the lunar eclipse, which was the third, uh, the blood moon. And, of course, you've got the doom- doomsayers saying the end of the world and, and, and all this and that. No, guys, none of this stuff means the end of the world. They're just signs and symbols. Yeah. It's all they are. Uh, but they do foretell a foreshadowing. They always do. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what's coming. Uh, there's some really rough times coming. There really are. And things, like you just said, things have just. It, you know when when you ride that roller coaster, 
and it's like yeah. you go up, 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 and then it's like slow, 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 and you're like, oh crap, yeah. uh, I'll survive this thing till it starts going down. Well, we're starting to go down, and that's yeah. when the, that's just when the fun starts. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of the Kundalini moment for all of that now. I think. Yeah. Um. You um. mentioned the uh, the quietness we talked about that a little bit and how it, it kind of freaked this out um mainly because i'm used to being connected i'm used to having this kind of yeah buzz in my head as strange as that sounds i've gotten real used to that buzz in my head and sometimes i don't like it because it is well sometimes it's the psychotronic stuff that's coming on Right. And sometimes you get these these the, the ear ringing, and then the uh-huh. flashing in the eyes, and it's it's like uh, it feels like somebody shot some acid into your into your uh, water cooler. Right. But the quiet was completely freaking me out. I, I I was sitting in the car talking to you on a telephone in a car driving, and as I sat there trying to find your phone number. I was listening and I was going, wow, it really is amazingly quiet. And um, I don't have an explanation for that. I don't like it when things go quiet. It's like uh, watching the earthquake map. I prefer to see a couple dozen small quakes going on all the time. It's looking at that earthquake map and there's nothing there. Yeah. That scares me. And as far as, you know, as being connected, you know, I, I told you many years ago, I, <laughs> one of those weak moments when I was fed up mm-hmm. and I said, cut me loose from all this. And somebody did. And I was disconnected from everything. And I was utterly, totally 100% human wired. I thought I was going to die in about a day. <laughs> Yeah. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah, you may no, get it. I did. Yeah. I did. It took me about a day, and I was I was begging, turn me back on. Just just turn me back on. You know, yeah. can it reconnect me back up? And uh, I got you know reconnected to home and could feel things again. Could see things again. Since things, since everything around me again. You know, the whole thing became normal for me again. Um, and there's just. You mentioned the veil dropping. That's becoming more and more pronounced. Uh, I've had so many people over the past couple of weeks ask me what's going on. You know, and they say they're seeing things out of the corner of their eye. They're they're snapping awake at night, hearing things, hearing knockings, uh, hearing yeah. scratchings, hearing like yeah. what sounds like giant wings, and so on and so forth. That's the veil dropping. That's the barrier between this world and the next world, which some people call the astral realm or the spiritual realm. Uh, The astral realm is, my God, it's unending. Uh, The closest thing to us is, is what we would call the spiritual realm. And it's just that veil is getting thinner and thinner. I'm also noticing an uptick again in paranormal going on. Um, The, Smoke monsters, shadow people are uh, starting to pop up again on radar. It's been several years since uh, I encountered this guy. But um, you and I have talked about this before. We've talked about it publicly on the show about the appearances of these, these beings because they are beings. And most people who experience them either do one of two things. They um, need an, an immediate change of underwear yeah. or – or they go into cognitive dissonance and just completely do not see or comprehend what's occurring around them. They dismiss it. But I got uh, communication from somebody a few days ago, an email talking about this apparition, which is exactly what we're talking about. I call them the smoke monster, the shadow people. Um, But basically this popped up in somebody's basement and um, they were quite, quite freaked out by it. Yeah. Um, in some instances, what a lot of people call shadow people are, or shadow man, um, 
a lot of times that's what they are. Mm -hmm. But in some instances, they're actually wraiths. A wraith is a really, really nasty creature, and that's something I was going to go into Friday. A wraith is something that can only be summoned. They are like the uh, assassins of the supernatural realm. Right. And they're very hard to, to deal with, extremely difficult to kill because they're, they're pure energy. Um, get into more of that later on, but yeah, it's straight up, it's getting crazy. And it's time for it. It is. Um, in one sense, uh, the more this stuff gets opened up, and the more people that begin to see it, uh, it's like almost a conditioning of responses because now at least people are open to the idea that there is a paranormal world out there. They don't know that they've been living in it and being, frankly, controlled by it for a long time. So yeah. on one level, this is what's called in, uh, I guess, Rosicrucian lore, revelation of the method. We're starting yeah. to see... We've called it the unveiling for a long time, but the very old term for it was revelation of the method. And this goes back into the early 1600s. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even farther than that, um, it's all part of the grand, the, the grand conjunction, uh, the merging of realms, the merging of worlds, the veil of thinning. It's all the, 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 the different aspects of all the different cultures all coming together into one coherent thing. It doesn't matter what culture it is, they all have basically the same yeah. thing from Re from Revelations to Armageddon to Ragnarok to whatever whatever your culture is, whatever you want to call it. You know, it, it's all it's all coming together into that one sing singularity point. Right, yeah. And CERN, you know, the the Halon Collider, it it's got a lot to do with it. Um I heard they had some electronic problems yesterday. Yeah, I heard that too. It looks like their uh, startups gotten delayed again. Yeah, sorry about mm. that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, did that. <laughs> not really, but I'll say so anyway. Uh, you know. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Um, you know, I warned them. Yeah, you I did. Warned them. Now, in terms of revelation of the method, um, this popped up today on your Facebook page, and I thought maybe we could just touch on it for a few minutes. This movie trailer that's on YouTube right now, The Shaman, which um, I watched the trailer right before the show tonight. And I got to say, um, somebody's paying attention. Yeah, um, I watched the trailer and... I haven't lost my temper in a very, 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 very long time. And I darn near took my laptop and just threw it across the room. Yeah. Not so much in what I saw, but in what I heard. Yeah, and if I could have gotten my rig up tonight, I would play the audio clip from this video trailer because it's very, um, well, revealing yeah. in terms of what they're talking about here because it's it's like a lifted script man i know and i actually after i after i watched it i wrote the director and the the writer director of the of this movie and i actually got a response back And he wanted to know what a gray walker was. So I went into a semi lengthy explanation, ending it with, I think we need to chat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know for a long time that Hollywood has been trolling the internet. Um, there's one very famous film writer out there um, who has done scripts for several major TV series. It's on record as saying that he's basically been lifting plot lines off of the forums and chat rooms on yeah. the internet. Oh, dude, uh, let's see, years ago when I had a very old website and I had a stack counter that was even better than the one I've got now, I could tell you within two months when a new TV show, an episode, a movie, if anything concerning what we've been talking about was going to be up because yeah. 
Fox Network, uh, MGM, um, Lionsgate, all these people were going to the website and spending hours on it. And they yeah. were just yeah. they were just lifting the information, twist twisting it, turning it, using it, you know, the way they wanted it, and bam, putting it on TV and the movies. Well, the great irony is that everybody's talked about how the internet opened up this wealth of knowledge for us, how all of this, and it did. You know, in 15 years, we took the entire world knowledge, collapsed it into a ball, and put it on the internet. It's a phenomenal project, and it was completely open source by the people for the yeah. most part. But at the same time, we got all this knowledge, but quite frankly, the people in the media industry, the people who work for the cabal also got an inside view into the reality of how much so-called common people know about things that yeah. they don't have a clue about. Exactly right. Exactly. And they put their um, the research people on this. Well, okay. Example, Jesse Ventura's people. That's how, that, that's how they found me. Right, right. You know, they told me uh, very bluntly, they were told to go on the internet find anything concerning this subject matter and bring it back to us and boom they found me they called me bam there it goes now they didn't have to, to to call me they could have just you know took that information pumped it into somebody and had an actor sit there and, and go through the motions the same thing so to their credit yeah they played it straight up but with a lot of these uh, movie companies and these producers and TV shows and whatnot, they don't play it straight up. They get the information, they hear the interviews, they read it, they twist it, they turn it just enough to keep any legalities out of the picture and they use it. Yeah, and the flip side to all of this is that um, this is actually the working of the collective conscience right now. I. I believe the Internet's enabled us to basically tap into something that was not possible for a very long time, and that was the pool of collective memory, the, um, the walking, dreaming state of humanity being reflected into the electronosphere and then mirrored back into this, the entertainment industry. If you just look at the yeah. films and the technology and what's possible now, I mean, just, you know, the X-Men films, the Thor movies, and what they've been able to do with that, because now we have the technology to create that kind of imagery, but we also have the imagery to create. Go look at the imagery of those old movies, like the old Superman movies, the old Batman movies, and look yeah. at the difference now. So we're in an amazing time in terms of being able to project our collective consciousness into the world sphere and reflect it back to ourselves. So, you know, on one level, we're seeing humanity, but we're seeing it now reflected back to us in a collective conscious sense. Yes. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. It's just, you know, how about a little feedback <laughs> for yeah. some of these people? The feedback you know? loop. Yeah. yeah. A little feedback yeah. from the, you know, the, the producers and whatnot that are going out there snagging all the information off the internet from sites like yours and, and mine and a mm -hmm. handful of others and using it for their gain. You know, I look, anybody that knows me knows money is so low on my totem pole. I don't give a shit about money. Right. I never have. I know that. You know, but <sighs> acknowledge where you got the information from. It's not yeah. a not a hard thing to do. But in the end, when all they have is their money, what we have is an awakening, whether it is the subject of UFOs, collective consciousness, the um, the topics that you've talked about for years, MK Ultra, the mind control systems, the right. black ops of the CIA. Um, shorter and shorter loops are spinning now. They can only run their operations within very tight levels, and they're not getting away with it anymore. By the time we got to Sandy Hook, they went, whoops, we're not really pulling this off very well, because yeah. as Sandy Hook was happening in real time, there were journalists online, and I was one of them, that was basically decrypting the entire thing and putting it out onto the Internet. And uh, it... 
really deconstructed their reality when they realized the power of what we could do in terms of coming up against their little plans because people were just sitting there deconstructing their whole little plot. Oh, I know. I remember that uh, vividly. Um, Sandy Hook for, for the powers that be, as it were, was a colossal F up. It was a mess. I mean, it's still screwing up. Now they've had to tear down the house of the alleged shooter. Yeah. Yeah. And why the hell would you, would you need to do that? Well, because basically that's what you do with a movie set when you're done with it. I mean, that's what Sandy Hook Elementary was. It was a movie set. Exactly. It was closed. The one report I had seen is that no one, ha that school hadn't been used in, what, five years? That seems years. to be the best, yeah, the best estimate. But that's what they're doing. They're using these towns, Boston, the Boston Marathon thing. Yeah. Um, you knew that was wrong from the minute it aired. I think the people in our circle definitely knew that everything about that just felt wrong. And then, you know, you have them wheeling amputees around with yeah. bleeding stumps, which you know as well as I do, you don't do that. Um, well, <laughs> I'm not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. But I do know explosives. Yeah. And <laughs> yes, we know you do. Yeah. Um, the, uh, <laughs> shh, the, uh, <laughs> our, our right. Shh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, the bomb that they use, the, the, uh, the so-called pressure cooker bomb that they use blows up, blows up and out. And I, I know, I know that percussion mechanism. Yeah, it it, it it it's 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 like a bouncing Betty, okay. It blows up and out. It blows high. It doesn't it doesn't explode low. You're not going to have the severed limbs from the waist down with this kind of percussion explosion. No, it's basically it, a shrapnel bomb. Yeah, it goes up. Yeah. It explodes up and out. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, bullshit, bullshit. So the good news, folks, is that um, we're being empowered right now. The bad news is too many people have fallen in love with the technology and they've fallen in love with the fascination of their computers and their Internet connections. And these are all useful tools. But I think you'll agree with me, Duncan. There's a time to pull the plug because the work that really needs to be done is in here. Yes, absolutely. Everything starts right here. It starts right there. It goes from here to here to here. And now, outward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the closing couple minutes that we have here, um, I know you don't have a website up right now. Um, are you open to public contact, and how would that happen? Did people find you? Uh, Facebook, of course. I still have that going. I'm not on there very much, but you know, uh, mostly just email, just my email address, Finbar uh, triple X at Hushmail. Got it. And just people can write me as well. Yeah. Um, and we we do pay attention to who's watching and who's listening. And uh, hey, buddy, I want to thank you for coming on for the first hour of the show. Um, I, I owe a lot to you, and one of them is being on this network right now. So um, uh, you don't you owe me nothing, my friend. I'm you introduced me to these uh, this wonderful network. Uh, it's a great place to be. And uh, 